In today's video, we're going to walk through an example of how to get started with a cost-effective Blazor WebAssembly application using SQLite and Lightstream that has great performance and disaster recovery built in. SQLite is commonly associated with prototypes or local machine-only applications because it runs embedded with your application, persisting data to a single file. These two traits also make it extremely easy to use since you don't have to worry about running a separate server or even a separate process dedicated to running your database. However, things get more complicated when it's used in a web application with user data that needs to be backed up and restored if anything goes wrong. Thankfully, a developer named Ben Johnson built an elegant solution to this problem called Lightstream. As stated on the Lightstream.io website, Lightstream is a streaming replication tool for SQLite databases. It runs as a separate background process and continuously copies write ahead log pages from disk to one or more replicas. It already has support for a range of storage solutions, including AWS, Azure Blob Storage, and SFTP, as well as many others. Something a lot of these storage options have in common is that they're extremely cost effective, reliable, and usually offer a high level of data redundancy. Combined with the already good performance of SQLite, speed of modern hardware and runtimes like .NET, a single server setup can support a level of user load that might come as a surprise to some. In this tutorial, we're going to use the ServiceStack Blazor WebAssembly template and add support for Lightstream replication and restore functionality using a Blazor-specific mix template for Lightstream. This will enable us to deploy to a Linux server running Docker and Docker Compose via SSH and have the process automated using GitHub Actions just by adding some GitHub secrets. Once we've walked through the setup and deployment of our application, we will demonstrate how our system performs under load without any further tuning. The load test will simulate hundreds of concurrent users querying and creating bookings on a single $48 DigitalOcean droplet, all while replicating using Lightstream to AWS S3, providing us point-in-time data restores and automated disaster recovery. By navigating to servicestack.net forward slash Lightstream, we can create a Blazor project with Lightstream support already incorporated with one of three different replication targets. AWS, Azure, or SFTP. For this example, we're going to look at targeting AWS S3 with a Blazor Tailwind template. Providing a name and clicking download, a zip file will be created with your solution inside, and you can extract the files to a local working directory and open the solution with your favorite .NET IDE. The Blazor WebAssembly template is split into four standard projects used with ServiceStack and an additional client project that contains our Blazor WebAssembly front end. We already have Lightstream support incorporated into our project. The added support for Lightstream is done in two of the project files, the docker compose template.yaml file in the .deploy directory and the release.yaml file which is one of our GitHub action workflows. The changes to the docker compose template yaml file enable support for automated Lightstream replication to AWS on deployment and automatic disaster recovery on startup using docker compose. For local development, your Blazor application will run like normal since Lightstream is only involved in the deployed Docker environment. To prepare your application to be deployed, let's go through the steps required to set up a Linux host with Docker and Docker Compose installed, as well as remote SSH for deployment. To demonstrate how portable this setup is, we are going to use a basic DigitalOcean droplet for hosting and AWS S3 for our database replication. Lightstream also supports DigitalOcean spaces as a target if you want to keep your infrastructure to one provider. Navigating to the DigitalOcean console and clicking Create Droplets from the drop-down at the top, we can walk through the wizard to create our Linux host. For this tutorial, we're going to use a basic Ubuntu droplet with a regular SSD at $48 a month and load test using Gatling to see the performance we can get out of a very simple setup. Select your region and SSH authentication and click Create at the bottom to start your host. Once started, we'll want to enable a reserved public IP and use this IP address in your domain management to create an A record pointing to your new droplet. 
Now that we have our host created, we need to do some once-off configuration to make it easy to host and deploy web applications to it using Nginx and Docker Compose. Remote access to your droplet via SSH can be done from the DigitalOcean web interface or any standard SSH client. The first thing we will do is install Docker and Docker Compose. To install Docker, we can follow the guide for Ubuntu installation in the Docker documentation. And for Docker Compose, we can follow the guide on DigitalOcean itself. All these links will be in the description as well as our written tutorial for this video. Once Docker and Docker Compose are installed, we can create a Docker Compose YAML file on our droplet that will run Nginx as a reverse proxy and a Let's Encrypt companion that will take care of our TLS certificates for our applications. This Docker Compose YAML file is included in the Blazor template under the .deploy folder and is called the Nginx proxy compose YAML file. To create this file, we can either use the SCP command line tool to copy the file or just copy the contents to a new file on the Linux host using an editor like Vi. We will make a small edit to this file so that you can be notified if there are any possible issues with your TLS certificates from Let's Encrypt. It's a good idea to specify your own Let's Encrypt email address before running these containers. Once this file is saved, we can use the following command to run these two containers in the background. This will create two containers defined in the YAML file and run them in detached mode. The Nginx reverse proxy will then watch for other containers using the default bridge network that contains the environment variable of virtual underscore host. When a request comes into your server, the Nginx reverse proxy will match requests with the same host header with other containers running with the same value in their virtual host environment variable, forwarding requests to the associated container. Now that our Linux host is set up, let's get our project on GitHub so we can use GitHub Actions to deploy our application. The Jamstack templates all contain a common set of GitHub secrets that can be used with the provided GitHub Actions release step that will deploy our application. The Lightstream mix templates also require additional GitHub Actions secrets depending on which storage provider Lightstream is targeting. In this case, we need three additional secrets used by Lightstream. One, the AWS S3 bucket name, and two more for the programmatic credentials required for Lightstream to access S3. By default, Lightstream creates a new snapshot of your database once per day, but it also continuously pushes write ahead log journal files every second. If your SQLite database file is lost for whatever reason, Lightstream can restore your database using a snapshot and subsequent write ahead log files. This also means if changes to your database need to be reverted, we can use Lightstream's point in time restore functionality to get our database back to a specific state using just a known date time. Let's go ahead and add the required GitHub action secrets we need to deploy our application. First, our workflow needs to be able to locate our Linux server using the deploy underscore API variable, which is the host name of your Linux server we created as an A record. The deploy underscore username, which is the username for the SSH login, and deploy underscore key, which is the SSH private key for deployments. It's best to isolate this key from other usages so you have just one for deployments. And lastly, a let's encrypt underscore email variable, which overrides the default email address used in the Nginx Docker Compose YAML we created. And then for Lightstream, we add the AWS S3 bucket as the name of the bucket we created for our Lightstream replicas, along with the AWS access key ID and associated AWS secret access key for programmatic access to write files to that same S3 bucket. These credentials are used in the application Docker Compose YAML file during deployment. However, there are other ways to authenticate Lightstream with the target storage solution, so check out lightstream.io for the best way that suits your requirements. Here we have all the variables we need set to deploy our application. If you use an organization, you can also create common secret values between your repositories to make it even easier to deploy an additional application to the same server. Running the release workflow will now deploy your application to your Linux host performing the following steps. First, it will build an image of your application using the Docker file in the project, which builds a release version of your application. This Docker image is then pushed to the GitHub container repository. 
Next, the Docker Compose template is populated with related values and secrets to produce the final Docker Compose YAML that is copied to your Linux host using SCP. And finally, a remote SSH command is run to pull your updated Docker image to the Linux host and run Docker Compose up. If we look at this Docker Compose template, we can see it has Lightstream as a sidecar service to your main application service. Your application service uses the depends on condition of service healthy to restore your database file if it's missing on the Linux host and is present on your remote storage. This is the functionality that will restore your database automatically on the next deployment if your host suffers from a critical failure where it needs to be replaced. It's also worth noting that this health check defined in the template uses a 10 minute timeout which is plenty of time for small databases to restore, but you should be testing your restore process to ensure it meets your requirements. With our application deployed, we can test our application and will be greeted with the example application in the Blazor template, including the bookings functionality. Before we add any bookings, let's have a look at the S3 bucket where Lightstream is replicating our database. Under the path that matches the name of your project, you will see a generations folder and a unique ID. Each generation contains a snapshot and WAL journal files that can be used to restore your database. Here we can see that if we create or update a booking, more WAL journal files are created. To put our application through its paces, let's run a load test scenario that simulates an employee logging in, navigating between booking search pages, viewing individual bookings, and then creating their own booking. This uses the Java-based load testing tool Gatling. We can then ramp this testing up to have over 300 concurrent users and 150 requests per second and still have a healthy amount of headroom on our single $48 a month droplet. The response times are fast and consistent with a standard deviation of around 30 milliseconds. And now that we have GitHub all set up for deployments, we can easily push changes and have them deployed automatically. For example, if we want to clean up the top and side menu system, we can alter the index.html variables to have an empty top menu and just show the bookings menu on the side. This handles our menu system for both the pre-rendered page and the application once loaded. Committing this change will go through the same release process as our first deployment. That is, it creates a new Docker image, pushes it to GitHub Container Registry, and uses Docker Compose via SSH to bring up the updated version. This also means if you want to host multiple applications on this Linux host, all you need to do is add the related GitHub secrets to your new application and you'll have an automated CI with deployments working in minutes and it's completely portable between hosting providers. That portability improves even more by using Lightstream. Since the database lives with your application and is continuously backed up, moving to another host is further simplified. For example, recently at ServerStack, we moved our demo applications from a DigitalOcean droplet to Hetzner Cloud. By adding Lightstream support to the ServerStack demo application Talent Blazor, all we had to do to move the application with minimal downtime was change the DNS to point to our new server, bring down the containers on the DigitalOcean droplet, and redeploy the application. The GitHub release workflow in the template found the new server due to the DNS update and connected via SSH just the same. Lightstream then restored the database to include the very latest changes and the deployment took less than a minute including the restore process. We also found that not only was the Hetzner Cloud instance a quarter of the price of the DigitalOcean droplet with the same CPU and memory resources, but our max throughput increased. If later down the road, for whatever reason, you find yourself wanting the features of a managed MS SQL, MySQL, or Postgres database, by using ORM Lite in your application, you can make the switch to another database technology with minimal changes to your application code. In a lot of situations, the only place you'll have to change code to support a different database technology is in the app host configuration changing your provider type. Taking a last look at our S3 bucket, we can see after our load test we have lots of WAL journal files persisted to our bucket. And if we can simulate a server failure that loses our local SQLite file by deleting the files in the shared volume, we can restart or redeploy our application and Lightstream restores our database with all the load test entries still present. Without any additional tuning, SQLite already gives us the throughput needed for a lot of different use cases with an extremely simple setup.
And when combined with Lightstream, we now have a great way to ensure our application data is being backed up to an extremely cost-effective solution when compared to running the recommended managed database setups from major cloud providers. When using the wizards on Azure and AWS to create a similar system, we can see monthly bills of nearly 500 US dollars. And because everything runs on a single machine, there are plenty of choices for different services and it's worth testing performance to find the right deal. And if you are building an internal application or early stage business to business application, you can likely utilize SQLite with Lightstream to save a lot of money early on. Let us know what you think in the comments. Is Lightstream something you can see yourself using with Blazor? Or do you prefer to stick with managed offerings like AWS RDS and Azure databases, even for your prototypes and small applications? Well, that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. If you want to to know more, check out our other videos and join us in the ServiceStack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. ServiceStack is free for individuals and open source projects, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.